Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you for joining us. My Bible right now is setting open to the book of of Galatians chapter 1. Yesterday we began a new study in this book, and I encourage you to stop, get your own copy of the Word of God out, get a piece of paper, get something to write with, take some notes, and also be ready to get some gospel tracts from us. Uh, That may sound like a lot of things to do right now, but right now get your Bible out and join me as mine sits open to Galatians and chapter 1. Now recently, I was the missions teacher in a vacation. Bible School near St. Louis, Missouri. I had the privilege of telling, uh, talking about missions to children starting as young as four years old going on up through 15 years of age. And needless to say, what I did with each age group changed a bit. Older children were challenged differently than the four and five-year-olds were. Now, one question I hammered and hammered and hammered on with all of the children, especially those nine years of age and older, is this. Why did Jesus die on the cross? I hammered on that question for two basic reasons. Reason number one is this. You can't be a missionary if you can't tell the gospel. That's one of those, well, duh questions, isn't it? And knowing why Christ died on the cross is at the very core of the gospel message. You cannot tell someone else what you yourself do not understand. I told them and I hammered that question, why did Jesus die on the cross, for a second reason. And it was this, you can't be saved if you don't know why Jesus died on the cross. I believe a whole lot of good church kids can tell us the Easter story, but they really do not grasp the why of Calvary. We're going to get to that today. You've turned into our Tuesday broadcast. This is our Tract and Truth Tuesday. We call it our Tract Day because we emphasize gospel tracts a little more, and our Truth Day because we want to emphasize the truth of how to communicate the gospel. If you and I are going to communicate the gospel, we've got to be able to explain the ransom of Jesus Christ on Calvary. We're going to find that Galatians chapter 1. You get your Bible open, please, right now. In my hand is one of our gospel tracts. This one's entitled, When You Meet God. When you meet God, friend, all of us will stand before God someday. Every single one of us. I'm going to stand before Christ one of these days. He is going to meet me as my Savior. All my sins have been dealt with and paid for by him at Calvary. I'll not stand there for my sins. Now, my works in serving him and how I live my life, they're going to be evaluated, and I'll be either gaining or losing rewards. But if you're here listening to me without Christ as your Savior, you're going to stand before him as your judge because you have rejected his sacrifice. This tract, When You Meet God, talks about that day and helps you be prepared by knowing Christ as Savior. In this tract, you're going to learn things about uh, oh, how to listen to what God's Word says about who He is, about listening to what God says about man, you and I, and what God uh, says about forgiving us of our sin. Now, this tract, When You Meet God, it's not complicated. It's very clear, very straightforward. It'll give you the gospel clearly. If you don't know Christ, you need this track. If you do know Christ, you need to give out this track to people who need Christ as Savior. You'll find no place, no gospel witness that is any clearer than this gospel track. When you meet God. At the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to be giving you, I think it's three ways on on how you can communicate with us, giving us your name and your mailing address. When you do that, we will send you absolutely free of charge, a complete sample packet of all of our English gospel tracts. 
We send out tracks all over the world. We do this free of charge as God enables us. Many of God's people help us, and I'd encourage you to consider that. If this gospel uh, program is a blessing to you, why not consider helping us? But by helping the radio program, you're really helping us get the gospel out by gospel track. But please, today, communicate with us. Give let us give you this sample packet of gospel tracks, including this one, When You Meet God. Come with me, please. Galatians chapter 1, look at verses 1 uh, through 4 anyway. Here's what it says. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be unto you, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen now, look at verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins. I'm going to stop reading right there. Yesterday we began, as I said, our study here in the book of Galatians. The first five verses introduce Jesus, but they don't introduce him to people who do not know Christ. They are reintroducing Jesus to people who know him as Savior. And we asked the question yesterday, why do this? Well, as we're going to see as we go through this week, there were people telling another gospel. Look at verse 6. It says this, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Verse 7, I'll not read it, it tells us that some religious people were uh, out there perverting the gospel, twisting it. And this perversion was causing people to become confused and agitated. People that know Christ, they were hearing error and they were confused. They were not well grounded yet. Now, because they were, there were false gospels out there, the true gospel needed to be told again and again and again. We are in a day in which many perversions of the gospel are being peddled all over the radio, all over the television, and in pulpits, and in seminars, and in seminaries. But let's answer the why question. Why did Jesus die on Calvary's cross? Again, look at verse 4. Who, speaking of Christ, gave himself, gave himself, gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of the Father. In a nutshell, Jesus died to pay our sin penalty. Whenever we share the gospel with lost people, let us not get caught in the error that people are saved by means of the love of Jesus. Friend, listen. His love, God's love for us is a great truth, a marvelous truth. Don't lose that truth. His love moved Jesus to become a missionary from heaven's glory to the sinful place called earth. He has loved us, Jeremiah says, with an everlasting love, but his love does not save us. His love moved him to perform a saving act, the Calvary's cross. Jesus gave himself for our sin. That word for in in verse 4 there means instead of. Christ gave himself for, instead of, in place of, as a substitute, in behalf of our sins. This week, I'm using some words that begin with the letter R to help unlock the what is taught in the opening five verses. Yesterday, we talked about the resurrection. Today, my R word is the word ransom. But to explain the ransom, I'm going to use some words that begin with the letter S. Are you ready? First of all, the ransom of Christ was a self-act. The verse says, he gave himself. Jesus Christ did not die as a martyr. His life was not taken from him. It was no mistaken activity that he went to Calvary. He came to give himself a ransom for many. The Gospel of Mark chapter 10 says, it was not a fluke. He came with a purpose to die for our sin. So my first S word is it's a self act. Second word is this. It's a sacrifice act a sacrifice act. Again, verse four says he gave himself. When you read the account of the cross death of Jesus, you will see that his death was an awful act. It was a horrific act. It was a brutal act, but he died as a sacrifice. It was a dying act. Christ died. He died on the cross. My third word that begins with the letter S is the word sin. 
so far we've seen that his death was a self-act, a sacrificed act, and now a sin act. By that I do not mean that Jesus himself was a sinner. What I mean is that Jesus died to pay for sin. Sin is our problem, not his Sin separates us from God. The book of Ephesians says we are enemies of God. Sin makes us uh, on the outs with God. We have to be what the the book of 1 Corinthians, excuse me, the book of 2 Corinthians says, reconciled to God. God does not need to be reconciled to us. We, because we have sinned, need to be reconciled to God. Sin separates us from God, makes us enemies of God. Have you and have I forgotten the opening lines of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 where it says, And you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead, dead in trespasses and sins. And it goes on to describe our walk after the course of this world, and we were in the family of the wicked one. And in case you don't know who that is, that is Satan himself. There are two families to belong in in this world spiritually. You belong to the family of God or you belong to the family of Satan. You are one or the other. There, Pardon the phrase, there ain't no middle ground, my friend. You belong to one or the other. I'm turning over my Bible right now to the third chapter of the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 3 and look at verse 13. Here is what it says. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us on our behalf. He died to pay for the sin curse on us. Oh, let me give you one more word that begins with the letter S. I've talked about the fact that Christ died as a self-act, a sacrifice act, and a sin act. But notice also here, I'm going to use the word slave act. Jesus died to deliver us from slavery to sin as a lifestyle. He died to free us from the penalty of sin, glory to God. But he also died to free us from the hold of sin on our life. We do not have to live under the thumb, under the power of our old nature and this sinful, wicked, well, what Galatians 1 and verse 4 is going to talk about this evil world. You know what the word evil means? Well, you stay tuned. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about that. What in the world is it when the Bible, when God calls this world evil, what does he mean by that? It's a pretty important truth. Friend, today here on Tract and Truth Tuesday, we've talked about the fact that Christ died as our ransom. You've got to be able to explain that. Christ died for a reason. He was dying to pay a penalty, a sin penalty, but not his sin penalty, your sin penalty. But that sin penalty only becomes effective for people on an individual basis when individuals do what John 1, 12 says. But as many as received him, to them, to those that receive him, gave he the the power, the right to become the children of God. You are either in the family of Satan or the family of Christ. You transfer family ownership by virtue of receiving Christ as Savior. He died on the cross to pay your sin debt so that you through him might be saved. Dear friend, have you done that? If you haven't, you ought to stop right now. I mean right now. Turn the radio off, cry out to God and say, God, Christ died for me on the cross. That's what the Bible says. Forgive me of my sin. Save my soul because Christ died for me. You do that and he will abundantly pardon. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.